Good afternoon, Madam, Co Madam Coley. Tinyang, Madam Coley. Okay. We welcome you to the regional hearings of the TRRC <laughs> here in Sintet. Sorry, in Sibanor. Bismillah, la na tundukang moirola, la moirola Sibanor sa dako And thank you for agreeing to give us your testimony. Barca baga ila songo la furuka naja ngi ila seria nirodi. Now you ready to proceed with your testimony? Silam po nga merebe pareri na furuka ila seria nirodi ngi kumasi. What are your names? Ito dunga ni konto. Ito Jara Kole. My name is Jara Kole. Where were you born and what is your date of birth? Ito nuda minto le andung ila sanji siyo be sanji jelo. I was born in the Fonjaro Bangkok. I was born in Sintet uh, in the Fonjaro district. And what is your occupation? I am a farmer. I work in the rice fields. Where do you live? I'm a resident at Sintet. Um, are you educated? I am a resident at Sintet. Uh, my education is uh, just a little bit. And can you tell us how far you went? I stopped at primary six. And um, can you just tell us briefly why you were not able to complete? I was not complete. It is because of the situation of my uh, parents, their earning, uh, that's what prevented me from completing my education. And um, where are your parents from? They are all from Sintet. Can you remember the day the witch hunters came to Sintet village? Well, they came there on a Monday, but I was not in the village at the moment they arrived. Can you remember the month or the year? Oh, yeah, kilosi karoning anin sango ni muda nola ba? Karoning ada wala ba sango 2009? I forgot the month, but it was in the year 2009. Please tell us where you were. You can say nga fonye benu mintu le. Meta bokoro. I was at Tabokoro. That's where I went to. And what were you doing at Tabokoro? Ebe mono nungke kang Tabokoro. Ndatang koto maraya lunta yara fadabo. I went to visit my elder sister fadabo. And um, can you tell us whether you received any news when, when you were with your sister Fadabo in Tabokoto? Yes, I was born in the village of Tabokoto. Yes, I was born in the village of Tabokoto. Yes, I was born in the village of Yes, I got some news there. Please narrate what news you got and from who. I was born in the village of Tabokoto and I was born in the village of Tabokoto. I was born in the village of Tabokoto and I was born in the village of Tabokoto. The information, information I got was from my son, Abdullahi Dabo. He called me. He told me, come, they have taken away my mom and dad. He told me, come, they have taken away my mom and dad. He told me, come, they have taken away my mom and dad. He told me, come, they have taken away my mom and dad. The witch hunters who come from Kanilai came here and they were captured and taken away to Kanilai. At the time I told Dabo that, well, I am going home. I told Dabo that, well, I am going home. I told Dabo that, well, I am going home. I told Dabo that, well, I am going home. I told Dabo that, well, I am going home. I told Dabo that, well, I am going home. I told Dabo that, well, I am going home. Can you tell us how old your son was, Abdullah Dabo? I was born in 1998. And please tell me the names of your parents. My mother's name is Bojan Dabo. 
My father's name is Musa Kuli. And um, your son, Abdullah Dabo, told you that both of your parents had been taken away to Kanilai. And did he tell you who had taken them away? He told me that it was the people sent by Yaya Jamme, the witch hunters. Those are the people who captured them and took them away. That's how I came home. When I arrived at Brikama, I didn't find any vehicle coming to Sintet. It was around 5 p.m. I was standing there till dusk. I didn't have any vehicle. Then I later was able to get a vehicle which was going all the way to Basse. Then I appealed to them to take me along. They brought me all the way to Kanlaji and dropped me there. When I arrived at Kanlaji, it was very late. It was around midnight. From Kanlaji to our home is very far. I was initially I was afraid to go. But when I thought about my parents, I said whatever happens to me will happen, but I will go. This is how I came all the way until I reached my home. When I arrived at our compound's gate, I discovered that there was light in my father's house. I arrived when I went into my father's house. I asked him, where is my mother? I heard that he was, she was taken away with my dad. He told me, well, I left your mother there, but I came back. I said to him, you came back? He said, yes. And um, I know you were surprised to find your father at home, having been told that he had been captured um, by the witch hunters. Ah, and are you saying that yes. this was on the same day that he was captured, that he had gone to Kanilai and come back? Yes, it was, same, it was the same day that my father returned home. And did he tell you the circumstances um, leading to his return home on that day? My dad said he was there, sitting down. There was a vehicle owner who came there and stopped by. It was called Suteba. He came there to look for his people. He came and found my father sitting down and told him now, board the vehicle and let's go. Then my father told him, how can I go and leave my wife behind? Well, my father looked at the situation and saw that there was no way to wait. He decided to board the vehicle and come home. So he was, his mind was still on my mother. And um, did your father tell you if anything had happened to him whilst he was at Kanilai? <laughs> I asked, I asked him, well, how about my mother's condition? He told me that, well, I left her there, but I, 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 they didn't drink the medicine in my presence there. And what about your father? Um, did anything happen to him whilst he was at Kanilai? No, nothing happened to him there. You have already said that your mother had not drunk the, con um, the concoction when he left. Can you tell us whether he had drunk the concoction? Mm. Yes, when my mother came home, I asked her, she confirmed to me that she had drunk the concoction. Mm. Um, Mr. Interpreter, I think we are getting the, 
there's a confusion between mother and father. I'm asking about the father, but her responses keep on um, saying it's the mother. So can we get that corrected? I'm what asking she, about her father. What she said in her statement was that when the father was living there, the father said that the time he left, the mother had not drunk the concoction by then. That's what she said. Okay, and my question is whether her father, not her mother, but her father, had her father drunk the concoction in Kanilai before he left. Okay. 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 No, he didn't drink the medicine. And do you know whether he came back on his own or he was with others? He came with some people. And um, do you know how many of them came back? No, he didn't tell me that. Do you know who they were? No, I didn't know. He just told me that Sute brought him with the vehicle. But those who were with him there, he didn't tell me about them. Um, I know that this is information you received from your father, but by any chance, um, did he tell you why Sute or how Sute was able to leave Kanilai with all of those people um, who had not drunk the concoction? Oh, I what Sute did to be able to bring those people, I don't know. He didn't tell me that. But he said he found my father sitting down and told him that, let's go home. Thank you for that information. Um, can you tell us what else your father told you? He said that he found my father sitting down and told him that let's go home. My father told me that when these witch hunters came and entered our compound, my mother ran into her smaller house in the compound there. The she, my father said the man was wearing red red and there were mirrors shown on his shirt and even on his face. Plus two paramilitary officers. They were standing at our gate. This man wearing the red clothes was the man who came in and forcefully opened my mother's uh, room, little room. When he opened the door, he decided to bring out my mother. He said he heard my mother telling the man, before you take me, let me wear my shoes. The man refused to allow him to wear her shoes. She also died. That's the time my father asked the man, why are you taking, uh, taking her away? Then the man replied and said that we are going to give her some medicine. He asked them, are you the people who are going to cure her or is it me who should cure her? That's the time when the man entered my father's house. The Quran he was reading, the man decided to close the Quran, take it up, and give it to my father, and told him, okay, pass, both of you are going. What about the man dressed in red? Did he have, was there another man who was dressed in red? Or was he the only one? He was the only person who was wearing the red clothes. He came with these two paras. And um, how could you tell that the two others who were following the man in red were actually paramilitary? Mama, I'm 
The way my father saw them, that's the way he explained it to me, and these are the people who wear black uniforms. Thank you very much. So he was able to recognize them through their uniforms. Yes. Yes. You mentioned that um, she asked for her shoes. And that was denied. So did she go barefooted? I think she went barefooted. You also mentioned that um, she asked to wear a shirt and that request was also denied. Yeah, they refused that also. So how was she how was she dressed when she left the house? According to the statement of the woman, the shirt she was wearing was just a small shirt. That she wanted to put another shirt on top of that, but they refused. Then she decided to take her head cover and unwrap it around herself. And um, was anything happening in that area where the buses were parked at the time? Uh, the green boys were drumming and dancing. And um, kindly tell us what else your father told you that day. Silang, afonya ifa manar na muna foye kota nge jero. When they arrived at Kanilai, they were made to alight from the vehicles at the military camp. They were at that military camp just before they were uh, before the drinking of the medicine. That's the time when she uh, left them and came home. And um, did your mother return that day? No, she didn't come home that day. She remained there that day. And how long did she remain in Kanilai? How long did she remain in Kanilai? I tell you, Kanilai. I spent two nights there. On the third day, she was released to come home. It was on a Wednesday. And during these three days, did you find out any information about what was going on with your mother? I didn't go there because I don't go out. Why didn't you go out? Because I was seriously embarrassed and I was unhappy because they caught my parents, my mom and dad, and they said they were uh, uh, man, they were witches and wizards. This is a big embarrassment for me. This is why I don't go out those days. And where did you get this information that um, both of your parents were branded? as um, witches and wizards, or a witch and a wizard? I don't know that When my dad came home and told me that they were branded as a witch and a wizard, then my father, when he returned home, he left my mother there. So that shows that my mother uh, is somebody who they term to be the real witch. And um, do you know whether this is why they were captured from Sintet and taken to Kanilai? Yes, yes. Why? Why are they captured? Why are they captured? Why are they captured? Why are they captured? Why to what your father told you and perhaps other sources you may have had do you know of other people who were actually taken um, from Sintet on that day? I don't know. I don't know. 
Sinter Birum Fula Yola Maninka. Ye bear some of a yam, see us yam, we are mobile in the Yemen like Samakanela. Sinter Dandi from the Fula, Mandinka, and Jola tribes were all captured and taken away on that day. And were all of them um, from the village of Sintet, or did they come from other areas? You will be able to Sintet. Sir, I will come from Fudol. Come from Fudol. Sintet, na bara bara ulleba. Be mang Sintet. Don't call. Don't not. Some of them are Yandara. Ye. Don't want to cast them as not a song to ye. You will not find a mutare samba. They were not all indigenous of Sintet because there was a funeral in our village that day. Some left Kasamas to come and attend that funeral. So some of those strangers were also captured. Did you have a relative who was actually captured as well with your parents? Ninga borela ulula ulula. Ko ela ba de mak sudu ngol dol kono mbeje la men yemone muda ba. Ningo? Ninga borela ulula fulol. Iba ma ni fama. Fo ela ba de mak sudu ngol dol kono mbeje la yemone muda ba. Angai. Yes. Are you able to tell us what her name was? Fo isa fo no ni ato fo nyaba. Isi fo no ba de. I can recall their names, but I have written some names and given it to you. Yes, I understand that there are certain names that mm -hmm. you are not comfortable mentioning, but you have a relative who you told me that you're comfortable mentioning um, her name. No, so no she's the one I'm asking about. No, for how long? If you don't tell Dina, and we make we make one more for you, twelve for you. We see in diamond. But you know, but in killing two for you, you go over there. We make one more for you, for you. Be careful. It was my elder sister Bintandim Manjang. When my mother was released, she came with my mother. And um, you have also given us um, a list of other names that you want us to keep confidential. Is that correct? And we have to list all the names that we have to keep confidential. Is that correct? Yes. And um, this list, um, do you have a copy of the list in front of you? The usher will provide you with the list right now. Um, the names that you have given me have been reduced to six names. Number one, number one and two. Number one and two are people who are seriously sick and they cannot do anything for themselves. Number three to six, wala wala fata. Number three to six are the people who are there. Wala Ms. Uh, Mr. Interpreter, can I just have the last sentence that she said? She said that uh, the number uh, three to six are the ones who died. Thank you very much. And can you tell us what the condition is of number one and number two? Uh, more follow. I don't know if you have a phone on your phone. You can take each one of them one by one so that we understand what happened to one person before you move on to the next. Number one is six. 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 Whatever is done is done. Whatever she wants is done for her by people. Number two. Number two. Omumbar malam kodo osa sa tarangi nang po yani loptano. Is my uncle's wife. She was so sick this year that she was admitted at the hospital. Ya bula fama abe yundo madi maya. After they released her, she is now staying with her adinke of her dimuso. Adinke. She is now staying with her son at yundo. And um, are you able to tell us what the cause of um, their sickness is? Well, it's not only that it's a sign of the disease, it's a phone over. What are you telling me? It's because of the medicine they drank. And I know that we're going to come to that later on, but I'm just getting this information now. What about um, three to six? You mentioned that they are deceased. Can you tell us um, 
what was the result, what was the cause of of their death ina murla na ukan na doma ndin sayen ye mo saban jaw ani mo woro jaw fo yalla no muneke mune sababu ri da saya la ba all of them drank this medicine and i can say that that was the reason for their death did you subsequently get any information about what actually happened to your mother in kanilai fo nyaala ba ngoni inata na lon na muna kete iba mala kanilai ba ah ba ma na ra ke baro so ko ya min dile i later got information that she was given the medicine to drink please tell us what happened and what she experienced there sidan a fonni muna keta ay muna muna keta la karango de jedo kabra o boro ni muna akita nyaadi mba ma fo na ta ngene fonni ko biriya samba e fra wulaaro my mother herself when she came back told me that when they arrived there in the evening ako tala lu wa tole min diro ko mate they started giving them the medicine around 5 o'clock in the evening ngi fo tala tema when the it was her turn ako ya ka ko dum kamoto ya dum diwote prate ko she was taken into a toilet and told her to go and bathe Natafai ko ewura they told her to take off her clothes ako wura dula ni ko yarage ba kandu ama marun fula won wolle be lora ko to at that position where they told her to take off her clothes she was very unhappy there because the people who were standing there were the age mates of her grandchildren odo wala kana te wura e ku but she said she had to take off her clothes and take bath Miraye ku ina ta litara mi don fanda borore ka ami after taking bath they filled a liter a cup of a, 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 a cup or almost a liter and told her to drink that medicine nya ko mem ba ko no ka nyimi aya ko no the remaining the, the remainers of what remained in the cup she, they told her to chew it up and swallow it ako bira o nyima ko no wa to me boro bi na ko ke ya fa nya ko no ka kam no ko ko mal mu na a jano da be da mi do fani alami ya londe bo ni mo fonda ko ni ya be sun kan den ko mo nangi after drinking and chewing the drugs which were left in the cup they filled the cup again and splashed the water on her face she said the pain she felt in her eyes was so excruciating that uh, she cannot describe it and after she was given a bath in the medicine and then later she drank it can you can did she tell you what happened to her afterwards bring atara ya ku nyim boro la ni narana do fanan diala pour ayami fu anarana fo en ba hanin kabi kabri nga nyim beke mune keta la ba ko bere ye wodi ala ala fewol dum ate kabo kamoto ka finti a wala kala mun nyin towa mo kala mun ta boy ta nyawo nyaama man fello nyi fa so mo she said after drinking the medicine she took her clothes she put her clothes on and she came out of that toilet but from that moment up to the following day she didn't even know when she fell down she spent the night like that and what happened um, on the following day mune na na ge fo sa wo sa mo ako sa mo ko na biru fano ga de na te na te kilif she said after the break in the morning they were called ako biru fata ko be ke ngine ka momo yedi e buwala mo remo jelle fa ke ngene ka wala and they started questioning them each and every one how many people did you kill you are a witch or wizard akoba la tafana bigani ka futama anya bala neme neme ngine ka no ko momo fa e ka mburu ke ka boro di ala so when they were asking people those who stated that i didn't kill anybody they will take you back yo ba neme ko ngamo ngi nan kamuna fa kata do ye ku ne fintina But those who said that well i have killed so and so amount of people they take you back bath you and take you out ako ate bi di fratama e kaye mo gele fa fana ko ngamo fla la fa when they asked her how many people did you kill she also said i killed two people na tamu de kaye tete ko then that's the time they told her go and bath with that medicine ako bi rata ko lay murtana kan na ko de ke boro bi kaso ko no e kaye ami ko ko bar ngama nga fa ko ngamo fla fa kaye ba minal by force After bathing they filled the cup again and told her to drink it. She told them but I told you that I've killed two people now why are you giving me the medicine again? She said they told her that no you are going to drink again. Aka fane amin bira amin bira o fana la tewol dum a findu da malo men be keer volume ne be selana. After drink after drinking it the second time she 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 became unconscious again she didn't know what was happening. until on wednesday the day that they came home 
And can you tell us who was questioning her about being a witch? She said it was the red people, the man wearing red who was there, plus the paras who were also there. It was the paras who were interpreting for the man who was wearing red. And what happened after the third day? On the third day, she said that's the day when they were released. The bus which took them to Kanila is the same bus which returned them back to the village. Well, on their return, uh, she came with the lady I mentioned here, my elder sister, Bintanding Manjal. On the way coming, after the bus, the way they boarded the bus, that's where they were dropped. So on the way coming, my mother fell down on the road. It was this lady who helped her and caught her and helped her until they arrived in the compound. And after they arrived in the compound, can you tell us what condition your mother was in? Bring in Arana Furata Suan in Kono. For Isafon on Ibama, Cabra Furata Suan, Abbe Alhala Nadi Lacono. Belafo that I did not do the Furia, why I went in Natale, while I went to Monga Bendun and Amun and Natra Mokon. It was the children who first saw her. They came and said, Yeah, Mama has come back. That was the time she also went. They caught her and brought her right into the compound. But our time, oh, Monata di Amunola can do. That day when she arrived, she was incoherent, she was unable to talk, her tongue was heavy. So this is why after I observed her condition, I left her alone for her to rest. I left everything until the following day. That's why that's the time when I came to her and I started questioning her. Please go on. That's the time she explained to me how she was made to drink this medicine. And That's how she narrated to me how she was uh, uh, forcefully, forcefully abducted from the room she was hiding in and brought out. She went barefooted with just a small little shirt on her body. This is how they took her away. And um, how did you feel after hearing the narration from your father as well as your mother about what happened to them during their capture and subsequent detention at Kanilai? because it was also embarrassing. We lived in a large family. Now to come and catch them and accuse them like this was something which was very, very hard for me. I was embarrassed and was very unhappy because my mother was somebody who is living with us in the family and I didn't know her like that, the way they, they accused her. And you have already told us that um, you received information that those who captured her were sent by the ex-president Yaya Jama. Is that correct? And we are in front of you, Leko. You keep our sources, Leko. May 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 any more kinan? Can any more mutha lasa roko no? Wala wala muna nunto president or member nunja Yaya Jama. Fola. Yaya Jama le kinan kan? Wala muna member sodo puru kanamu kamara Yaya me bulat. Well, it was Yaya Jama who sent them because those people had no powers to come on their own and come and capture people without Yaya sending them. 
And can you tell us what um, your mother's ordeal, what impact your mother's ordeal has had on you and the entire family? Sign for your phone on your Ibama Lenin Ku, Mela Rakanting. I am Munkolea Kulesa, Witaman in Dimba, Kotamola, Dimba, Kotamola. The Homan Kadiamata, I am not talking. I am bidding Kuya man in Bitema, Mankatamanta and Fubunda. Well, the, what happened to me uh, is very hard because from the day this happened to her, I cannot go and stay at my marriage place. I am staying with my mother, taking care of her. It was my husband, it is my husband who allowed me to go and stay with my mother to take care of her. So he will be going and coming. And um, apart from um, the impact that you have just mentioned, is there anything else you wish to say, just to conclude? Ning about any kolea dal, any kolea kolea me for janteng. For do kot kuma do kotem be bulle ma bela frakam me for ban puri ya kuma kanga da soran wala ba. Ah, yes. Ande mina mama for afengele. See, when I was coming, my mom even told me. Unsa fal aman kendea, ka aman kendea. Let me. Ira bona kani la aman kendea kendea sot. Unso bamba ni ko aman yata kendea sot. She told me to make it categorically clear that she is sick. She and is not well from the day she left Kanilai. And the yata kendea sot balia asoto imboni mi wala kono. And the reason for her too ill to come. So you've testified on both of their behalf. Munda ifa ma fano kono be sa sa rinadu. Ila sere andiro kono. Well, I'm more for being a said a cool melody. I not an hour. Yes, have you suffered any stigma as a result of what happened to your mother? For in a year, I'm going to put a bang, a cool melody, Bama, Ibama, Bama, Bama, a lot of work on Sado to Jeba. Ah, Ma Biranata, I've got a lot of can do a cool in Tamalinam, at a Fanamalurinam, can definitely be a bunch of Buffalo, Carfil and Bama, and you will not hear some of a Buayala. Atra Alamaja and Mamui. Okay, how will you quit the cocker and the blue in Yame? Yes, we are still feeling the stigma because just to look at somebody, this is why she doesn't go out. Because when she goes out, people will look at her with the eyes that this is the woman who was caught and taken away, and uh, they said she's a witch. That is something very, very embarrassing and which is very, very hard for her. And the same thing applies to me too. Thank you very much, um, Madam Kuli. Deputy Chair, you have the floor. Chairman Nolanko, Deputy Kiaka, and Yinin Karosro. Thank you very much, Jara. Okay, Barkabaka, Jara. I want to know uh, is Sute Dabo, the driver of the Gele Gele, is he still alive? According to Sute Dabo, Gele Gele drive on him, for Abbalurinaba. Sute Bar and Sute Dabo. He is Sute Bar, not Sute Dabo. Mm. Yes, he's alive. Uh, the reason I ask is really it would be interesting to know how he had the courage to drive into Kanilai and take out those people who had been taken there for the treatment. Okay. I don't know the reason. This is how my father narrated it to me. Mm. Uh, if there are no further questions, if you have any final remarks to make, um, uh, Madam Koli, please proceed to do so now. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Koli, you are saying that you are going to be able to get the same thing. Is it going to be able to get the same thing? It's going to be able to get the same thing. She's my mother. She's worth everything for me. If I was there that day, they will not take her away. They might take me away, but they will not take her away. This is what I can say. I'm also advising the school children. Because they came here to garner knowledge. So they should know how to talk to elders how to treat elders, how to go along with elders. They should know that properly and how to behave in the country. Yes, 
They didn't bring you here to look at people like just pictures and images. You are, brought, you are brought here to learn something. So try and have something that you can go along with, which will be knowledge for you people tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, karang. Yeah, hakilo soto. Yeah, balafa moli. Yeah, 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 yeah. Along with yantamuna kela moli. But yeah, yeah, karang. Yeah, hakilo soto moli. Bimbo alti nyaro kona ten. Ima hakilo soto. If you learn, you should have have. You should have mercy for the people. You should respect people. But the problem we are in today was because of those who did this did this to us. Didn't have mercy and they didn't have respect for the people. Thank you very much indeed, um, uh, Madam Kohli, for those very powerful concluding remarks. We appreciate them and the effort you have made to come and testify before the Commission today. We appreciate your effort indeed. This brings us um, to the end of our four-day visit um, to Sibanor.